Today on the Lucrezia Show, I'll be discussing the Daily Wire's latest film, Shut In. Is it as intense as the trailer made it seem? We'll talk about that. Plus, Kyle Rittenhouse announces a media accountability project that will aim to hold media companies accountable for lying to the public about him. I'm very happy about this, but some people have different thoughts. Plus, a school in Texas is paying kids $100 to attend and learn sets ed during spring break. And that's not a red flag, I don't know what is. And finally, in our cringe vid of the week, we'll learn about how to distress our lives AOC style. I'm Lou Kratzer, and this is The Lou Kratzer Show. You know, if you guys have been watching my content since the beginning, you will know two things. One, that I sound so much better now than in my earlier episodes. And two, one of my first films I talked about was a movie from The Daily Wire, Run, Hide, Fight, which is an amazing thriller that I recommend checking out. So, it will come as no shot that today I'll be discussing The Daily Wire's latest film, Shut In. Roll the clip. Lainey? I'm gonna take off tonight so the kids can sleep most of the way. Well, I'm mostly done. I just need to finish cleaning out the pantry. Money. There's a lot of money. There's thousands of dollars in the pantry. Have it all. Please come on, I'm scared. So before I review this film, this will be a spoiler-free review, so you guys don't need to skip ahead. So let's get to it. One of the things that I liked about this film was the way they filmed all their scenes in one location. The whole room where the mom was trapped, that was the majority of the film. And yet, the story within those scenes was still pretty interesting. Another element I enjoyed was the dialogue between the mother and the daughter. If you thought the movie was about the mother, you would be wrong because in reality, it was actually the daughter that stole the show. Now, I will admit there were times when she was a little annoying, but that's just part of her personality. I will say my favorite thing about this movie was the Christian references you see throughout the various scenes. It's not a spoiler, but if you guys see the movie, you will notice many references to God and the Bible. And some might argue that it was unnecessary, but to be honest, I think it added an interesting layer to the mom's character. And I also think that it was a contributing part to the main theme of the movie, redemption, because that's what the story is about. It's a story of redemption, which is a quality that I enjoyed watching the film. So, if you guys decide to watch this thrilling film, it will be something for you to enjoy. If you guys have been watching my content for a while, then you would probably remember the episode where I did a full take review of the Kyle Renhouse case. And you would also remember at the end I said that I hope that Kyle Renhouse gets a chance to sue every single person that labeled him a murderer, a white supremacist, and a terrorist. Well, just recently on Monday, Kyle Rittenhouse announced that he will be doing just that. Here's the clip. So the question is, after a full year of watching these people lie in order to imprison a kid for the rest of his life, 
who's going to hold the liars accountable? Kyle Rittenhouse, understandably, has thought a lot about this. He joins us tonight to explain his plan going forward. Kyle, thanks so much for coming on tonight. I, don't, I can't think of many people who've been at the receiving end of this much sinister lying from so-called news organizations as you have. How are you going to respond? Well, Tucker, thank you for having me. Um, of course. Me and my team have decided to launch the Media Accountability Project as a tool to help fundraise and hold the media accountable for the lies they said and deal with them in court. Now, although I'm on board with Rittenhouse's Accountability Project, others are fearlessly opposed to this. One person in particular is a Mr. A.J. Dellinger, who criticized Rittenhouse's campaign when an article titled, and I'm not making this up, hold on, Kyle Rittenhouse simply will not stop leveraging his status as a killer. Good God. So, that title alone is already a problem, but... Maybe we should read it and see what it says to better clarify. The author reads, quote, Rittenhouse said he'll go after politicians, celebrities, and athletes. According to Rittenhouse, Wobby Goldberg is on that list, as is St. Weeder from the Young Turks, both of whom have called Rittenhouse a murderer, probably because of the fact that he killed two people. He also says that he plans to sue everybody who has lied and called him a white supremacist, though he struggled the names there. If you're curious how anyone got the idea that Rittenhouse might have ties to white supremacist organizations, it might be because he posed for pictures with the far-right fascist group, the Proud Boys, and held up a white power sign in the pictures. A white power sign? A white power hand sign? Wait, do you mean the OK sign? You mean the hand sign that was used as a random hoax in 2017? but end up being taken literally by liberals with no context? Is that what you're talking about? Good God. Now, if this couldn't get any worse, the article con continues with, quote, This is a gift that could be seen coming 100 miles away. Carlson floated the idea to Rittenhouse back in November after he was acquitted, as did several other Fox News hosts, including Sean Hannity. Nicholas Sandman, another teen who took heat from the media and received settlements from organizations including CNN for their coverage of him, actively encouraged Rittenhouse to take legal action. All the engagement with those, fa with those fake news stories about supposed lawsuits basically just gave Rittenhouse the green light to do it for real. Whether or not he wins any of his lawsuits, it's unlikely, he'll at least rate in plenty of cash from people who believe in his cause. Whether or not he actually does himself, Rittenhouse wins either way, and we're all probably going to be stuck with his face on our screens for a long time. End quote. So, at, at the end of the day, this guy is just trying to find cheap and untrue excuses to make Rittenhouse look like he's using his status as a killer to, to his advantage. Hence the title. However, all AJ is doing, all he's doing is basically further explaining why Rittenhouse is doing this to be done with. Let me remind you, the corporate media, the famous celebrities, and even the President of the United States have been dragging Rittenhouse through the mud for years. He has been labeled a murderer despite the fact that he did it out of self-defense, and even labeled a white supremacist even though he shot and killed two white guys, one of them being a pedophile, and we never talked about that part. The point is, the life Kyle Rittenhouse knew before is now over. And it's all because the corporate media and left-wing politicians were willing to lie about everything to fulfill their, corporate, their corrupt narrative. Even after he was found not guilty, he still hasn't even gotten an apology from these people. So, in conclusion, Rittenhouse has every right to sue them for everything they got. And I hope he becomes a multi-trillionaire after that. And I'm very glad that he's giving others a chance to fight back against the media's biased narratives. So before we get into our final segment, I would like to ask you all a question. Would you stay at a public library for four days learning about sex education for $100 during spring break? I'll let you, give a mo I'll I'll let you have a moment to answer that question. You got it? Okay. So if you are a sane person like I am, then you, like I, probably answered no to that question because that sounds 
both boring and super weird. However, that's apparently what a school in Texas was trying to do. Here's a clip. The city of Austin has pumped the brakes on a plan to pay teenagers to enroll in a sex education camp scheduled for next month. The postponement comes as school districts across Texas prepare for state mandated changes to the way human sexuality is taught. KXAN's Daniel Marine has more. It was definitely an attention grabbing social media post last weekend. The Austin Public Library inviting teenagers to a four day spring break sex ed camp where they could quote, get paid $100 plus lunch. Following a slew of mostly negative comments, the posts vanished and the registration website closed. I mean, how desperate are you to have to pay kids to learn about sex ed? Well, luckily I found an article that would help with that. So, this is an article by the Plus Millennial. This is what it says. It reads, quote, <clears throat> The program for teens was intended to run over spring break during March 14th, and the camp registration site, which has been closed for now, read that camp staff use an evidence-based and LGBTQIA plus friendly curriculum used in schools across Travis County, reported the Texan. And there's even an ad, and this is the... And this is the ad to the public library that they had on their website. This is what it says. It reads, quote, Teens can, can get paid $100 to learn about sex ed this spring break in this evidence-based and LGBTQIA plus friendly course led by Austin, Public, by Austin Public Health. Space is limited. Yeah, that's surprising. Space is limited, so sign up now. You don't want to miss it. End quote. Good God. So basically, these guys were trying to bribe kids into learning about LGBTQ stuff. I mean, this is wrong because they are intentionally targeting kids and to indoctrinate them into this stuff. That is bad. But I also can't help but laugh with how desperate these guys are that they're willing to bribe kids into learning this stuff. I will say though, if these guys really wanted to bribe me into learning this stuff... Give me $500. Heck, I'll even pretend that I'm actually listening for at least 25% of the time. Maybe. Alright, cringe of it of the week. Let's go. Okay, so we got AOC. Ready what you go. doing? Okay. Five. Four. What? The... The frick? Good job, good job. <laughs> Oh. It's very big. Am I supposed to do it again? Yeah, it's yeah it, it obviously really? gave me a brain How freeze. How long? <laughs> like multiple sets. Okay. Go for as long as you can. Three, two, one. Wait a minute, that's it? Wait, she just dunked her head in a bowl of ice water and that's it? The frick? Okay, yeah, we're ready to talk about this now. You know... Out of all the dumb stuff I've seen AOC do and say, this is probably the dumbest. Like, hands down, this is currently the dumbest thing that she's ever done. Like, I actually did some research on this. She actually did this because uh, she was trying to reset her brain or whatever because she was stressed out. I mean, like, how does that happen? Like, I don't get the logic in that. So... This is definitely, hands down, one of the weirdest things she's ever done, and I also highly don't recommend doing what she did, because this is just so dumb. So, <clears throat> cringe level, cringe level. Uh, it's not that cringy, it was just straight up weird, so you know what, I'm just gonna put the cringe level at a 5 out of 10, and leave it there. Well guys, that's our show for today. If you like my content, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and be sure to click the little bell icon, that way you won't miss any of my new content. Anyway, I am very happy to be back. Uh, I'm very sorry that I didn't post anything last week. Uh, school has been a pain. Work's been a pain. Like, everything has been a pain. <laughs> so, I'm going to do my best to try to get videos out to you guys. But if I don't, then that's probably going to be the reason. Anyway, I'm Luke Kratzer, and thank you for joining me on The Luke Kratzer Show. Peace out, guys.